Hi, welcome to the 10th part of the C++ guide for JavaScript developers. I'm Oscar, and today I would like to take a look a little bit into tooling. So all this time we have been exploring C++ on the Repelit uh, console, but now I would like to teach you about CMake and CMake list, which is the tool that is more or less the standard tool to compile C++ programs. Now, I'm gonna go over a very simple example and we're gonna set up CMake from scratch. That being said, CMake is a very, very large tool and it's a very, very powerful tool. So we're not gonna be able to cover all of it. I'm just gonna teach you the very basics for you to understand um, what does a CMake list file do. Uh, but you will probably have to explore a lot on your own. Now, I have here a very basic file, which is just a main function. And I have also implemented a very simple uh, addition, a very simple library, let's say, which is just an extra file with the definition of my function and its header file. So it just outputs the sum of two and four. So in order to make this work, you're gonna have to first install CMake on your machine. If you have brew, you can just do brew install CMake. I already did this, so it's not gonna do anything for me. But once you have CMake installed, if you do CMake version, you should have the output in there. Now, you're gonna want to create a cmakelist.txt file in the root of your project. Now, before we start writing anything, let's talk a little bit about cmake. Cmake is, uh, you could think about it as a bundler of code. Um, as, you, as we saw in the very first video, the command for compiling a C++ file or a C file uh, involves the C compiler or the C++ compiler, some flags for the configuration, and then the files that you want to uh, output. Now, if you have more files or if you have a more complex project, you could try to put everything into a single command, but it's just very hard. You might want to compile certain parts of your project differently. You, want, you might want to bundle them in a library uh, or you might want to generate more executables and so on and so forth. So it's not really scalable to do everything by hand. So CMake was or is the tool that came out of this necessity to unbundle the compilation process a little bit and to make it more reproducible and stable. Now, uh, CMake works on top of a make file and the make file, um, we will see it in a bit, it's a lot more specific than a CMake list file. The CMake list file is an abstraction on top of CMake because at some point, even writing a CMake file or a make file on your own gets way too complicated. So CMake list is once again, an abstraction on top of it, which is supposed to facilitate a lot of the work in doing uh, very complex compilation pipelines. So let's just jump in and do an example of this. Um, I have created the CMake list file.txt on the root of my project. Uh, so I'm just gonna start adding some commands or some statements and we're gonna go over them. The first thing that I'm going to specify is the minimum required version of CMake. You can imagine as time goes on, CMake does uh, add more functionalities and does target new compilation targets and so on and so forth. So of course, if you want to have reproducible builds, you want to be able to specify which version of CMake do you need in order to compile your project. In this case, um, I think CMake, you can see it's already on the version three. I'm just going to specify an older version. Um, another interesting flag we could use is the set flag, 
which allows you to set different flags for your compilation. Now, for example, here I'm going to target C17. And of course, this is very useful as we saw on the previous videos, depending on which um, version of C++ you're using, you will have access to lambdas or not, and all the different features that are just C++, they don't have to do anything with CMake, but it's important that we are able to specify them. Next, uh, another required um, statement for CMake is the project. Here we can define some metadata about the project itself. We can define its version, we can put some description and so on and so forth. Um, I, I will leave a link on the description because as I said, there's just way too many stuff you can do with CMake and covering all of it, we will be here for hours. Now um, let's get into a little bit the more interesting part, which is how do you actually compile your C++ project. Now, on this very simple project, I just want to have an executable. We will also take a look into a more complex example where I'm going to try to link a library for the Android runtime, for example. But let's just keep it simple for now. And let's say I want to compile my main file plus my extra library. So if I would just have my main file, then all I would need to do is to add executable. This is a special, this one, the CMake statement that is going to take a list of C++ files and is going to output a single binary. Now, in this case, because I also have an extra file, which is my math.cpp. I will also include it. But again, this is, you cannot include too many of them, right? Like if you have a very complex C++ project, then this grows and the situation doesn't get that better. So you can also, you also have some statements that could potentially um, automatically add all the header files that you might need in your compilation target. And here, in order for the linker to work, because basically here I'm including my header file, I have to include a certain directory, right? By including the directory, Whenever I try to compile my C++ file, all the header files will be made available to this file, to the preprocessor. Like we saw, the preprocessor needs to replace the contents of the file in um, my source code. So this is going to help me do that. This is going to help the compiler tool to recognize what, uh, where my files are. And then for my executable, I will just pass um, on this case, I will just pass the files that I need for my compilation. Now, um, in order to make CMake work, uh, we first need to run just the CMake command with the directory where we want to run it. And this is going to create a bunch of things. First, it's going to create a cache that has some internal files, the CMake files as well. And it's also going to create a make file. Now, like I said at the beginning, the CMake list is an abstraction on top of the make files. And we can now take a look inside of this make file. And you will see that it's quite a lot of commands in here because it's a little bit like yarn where you can have steps in here, right? Like you can say pre install you um, define certain steps for your compilation. But if we take a look, let me check if... Yeah, basically, 
it's going to take the make command. I mean, it's gonna read and it's gonna parse all your files and it's gonna, um, for example, we talked about the linking step. You know, if we compile our C++ file, the first output of the compiler is an object file, which is not linked against the libraries. The make file is gonna do that for you as well. So when I started coding, you know, when I started one of my first jobs, I actually used uh, CMake by manually writing the, the make file. And it's not simple, right? There's, again, it's a very, very complex tool. It's very, very powerful, it allows you to do a lot of things, but even writing this make file, which is better than writing commands on your own, it does get very, very complicated, very sudden. So the CMake list file is gonna take care of all this stuff for us. Uh, so once one more important um, information about the CMake list file is that it will it can set up the compilation chain independent of your system, right? So here, for example, I am specifying the C++ version that I'm using. So instead of having the compile me myself having to style the compiler uh, for my machine this specific version. Uh, CMake also takes care of that for me, right? It um, takes care of all the caches. Basically, it just makes the compilation a lot more stable and reproducible. So once that CMake list has um, set up all the files, I can finally go and tell it to build my application. Basically, through the add executable, CMake knows what's the output that I'm expecting. And here you can see I passed the name my project and finally it has outputted a binary. So I can just run that binary and I have the output of my program. So if you are planning to build a React Native JSI library, you might want to write C++ like we mentioned at the beginning of the course. And in order to do this on Android, you're going to have to use CMake lists, right? On Xcode and on iOS, Xcode handles all the compilation of C++ files for you. Android is dependent on CMake. So now that we have seen the basics of a CMake list file, hopefully this won't be as daunting to you. Um, you can see this is a CMake list file from uh, Android library I developed, and hopefully we will review it in a different video, but it's pretty similar. First, we have the CMake minimum version required. Then we set up certain flags, for example, the um, C++ version that we're targeting. If we're gonna use a verbose make file, we are at the same time including the directories that are part of React Native in this case, if you are targeting a different system, you might have to uh, target or include different directories for the header files to be found. And here's one difference. Um, when we're targeting Android, we don't want to generate a binary, but we rather want to um, create a library and then make that library available to the Android side of things. So here, instead of using the add executable command, I'm using the add library command, right? I'm creating my own library and then just passing all the files and header files that I want to um, compile in order for this library to be uh, prepared. And finally, I can tell the, I can tell CMake to link my library to the final runtime or to the final um, environment that I'm going to, to run this. In this case, this is for Android, and I'm also adding some additional libraries. So this comes from the Android runtime, the Android and the log library. So I can call, for example, um, Android specific APIs from my C++ code. Great, so I think that's it for the C++ side of things. Uh, next, the next few videos will be on the JSI. It might not be as interesting if you are not a reactive, React Native developer, but I hope that you enjoy the video and please consider subscribing. Thanks.